Hi everyone, this is Midnight Mommy. So, for this tutorial, ituturo ko sa inyo tungkol sa uniform circular motion. So, kapag sinabi natin uniform circular motion, this is the motion around the perimeter of the circle with a constant speed. So, ibig sabihin yung object natin, um, dumadaan siya sa isang curve path o isang full circle. Okay, so katulad dito na dito sa drawing natin. So, meron tayo ditong rider na lumiko siya dito sa daan na to. And same thing, for example, dito yung ship na nag-turn siya. Okay, so as long as na meron kang curve path, pwede nating sabihin na yung object natin is undergoing uniform circular motion. So, an object moving in uniform circular motion would cover the same linear distance in each second of time. So, ibig sabihin nito, constant yung kanyang speed hanggat umiikot siya doon sa curve path na yon or na doon siya sa circular path. So, in this case, pwede natin sabihin na constant yung speed niya pero nagbabago yung kanyang direction. So, although constant yung speed dahil nagbabago ang direction natin, pwede pa rin natin sabihin ng merong acceleration yung ating body once it is in uniform circular motion. So this time, i-describe natin yung average speed ng isang body undergoing uniform circular motion. So sa linear distance, sinasabi natin na ang linear speed natin is just equal to your distance divided by the time. Pero sa uniform circular motion, since ang object natin is umiikot sa isang circular path, therefore yung kanyang distance is actually equal to the circumference, okay, yung distance around the circle, okay, the circumference of the path divided by the time. So, ano ba yung formula ng circumference? Ang circumference, ang formula niya is 2 pi r over t, wherein yung r natin is yung radius, and then yung t dito is yung time. Okay, so minsan ang tawag din dito sa time na to ay period. So kapag sinabi natin period, this is the time it takes for the object to make one complete cycle. Or sometimes we also call this as one complete revolution. Ibig sabihin, isang ikot siya. Okay. Na pagdating naman sa acceleration, di ba sa linear motion, dinidescribe natin ang acceleration as your final velocity minus initial velocity over the time. Sa circular motion, yung ating centripetal acceleration na tinatawag, okay, ibig sabihin ito yung acceleration along the circular path. This one is equal to v squared over r. Okay? So, iba ito doon sa linear um, acceleration na alam natin. So, lahat ng object in uniform circular motion, hindi sila makakaikot o hindi sila makakapag-make ng turn kapag wala tayong tinatawag na centripetal force. Itong centripetal force na to yung responsible para makaikot yung ating object. So, ang centripetal force natin, for example, dito sa picture na to. Diba meron ka ritong bucket and then kung itatay mo to sa isang rope, at least ay lalagyan mo ng tubig yung bucket. Okay, possible ba na hindi malalaglag yung tubig kapag inikot natin siya? Okay, possible po. Magiging possible yan because of the centripetal force. Now yung centripetal force natin, for example in this case, ang centripetal force natin is always directed towards the center of the circle. So kung nandito ang ating bucket sa taas, yung ating centripetal force is directed towards the center like this. Pero kung let's say ang bucket mo kunwari is nandito na sa portion na to. Okay, pare nandito na yung bucket mo, no? So yung direction ng centripetal force natin is still going to this direction towards the center of the circle. So in this case, papunta siya sa uh, left side. Now kapag nandito naman ang bucket natin sa baba, okay? So again, ang direction ng centripetal force is pataas. Okay? So in this case, it's going north. Pero again, if you notice, ang direction ng ating centripetal force is always directed towards the center of your circular path. So mauhulaan nyo na na kapag nandito na yung bucket ninyo, okay, sa portion na to, ibig sabihin pag ganito na yung direction ng ating centripetal force, and in this case, is going to the right. Again, Parati siyang directed towards the center ng ating circular path. So, centripetal force natin is also equal to your net force. So, ito yung mga, sinabi natin net force, ito yung sum ng forces na responsible para yung object natin is umikot in a circular path. So, paano natin kinocompute ang centripetal force? Ang centripetal force, makocompute natin siya by using Newton's second law. So, kung matatandaan nyo, ang Newton's second law is just equal to F net is equal to ma. So kung gagamitin natin itong formula na ito sa centripetal force, okay, this one is equal to mass times the centripetal acceleration. Okay? 
Kasi dito sa unang equation, yung acceleration dito is linear. Ibig sabihin along a straight line. So dito sa pangalawang equation, yung centripetal acceleration na tinatawag natin is ito yung acceleration along a circular path. Now kung papalitan ko yung equation ng centripetal acceleration ng V squared over R, yung aking equation ngayon na FC is magiging ganito. Magiging M and then papalitan ko yung A ng V squared over R. Magiging ano siya? V squared over R. So ito yung formula ng centripetal force. M V squared over R. Where in yung M, yung ating mass, yung V, yung ating speed. Remember yung speed na to is along the circular path. And then meron tayong R na radius ng ating centripetal path. So this time naman, mag-solve naman tayo ng problem sa centripetal force. So for example, you have a 900 kilogram car moving at 10 meters per second makes a turn around the circle with a radius of 25 meters. Determine the acceleration and the net force acting upon the car. Okay, so sulit mo na natin lahat ng given. So meron tayong mass na 900 kilograms and then meron tayong speed na given na 10 meters per second. So sinabi na rito na yung 10 meters per second mo is already your speed around the circle. Okay? And then meron tayong radius dito na 25 meters. Okay? So pinapahanap sa atin yung um, acceleration and yung net force. Okay? Now tandaan natin na yung net force dito um, is also equal to your centripetal force. Kasi yung object mo nga is nagbo-move along a circular path. So i-compute muna natin yung acceleration. So yung acceleration can be computed by using V squared over R. So isa-substitute natin tong value na to. So papalitan lang natin yung V ng 10. So ito magiging 10 meters per second. And then kunin natin yung square niya. Divided by yung radius natin na 25 meters. So in this case, meron tayong 4 meters per second squared. So ito yung ating centripetal acceleration. Next, sagutan natin kung ano yung magiging net force. So ang net force natin is equal to MA. So since dito, given na tayo ng centripetal acceleration, so pwede lang natin palitan tong equation na to agad. So yung mass natin is 900 kilograms times 4 meters per second squared. So yung makukuha nating sagot dito for the net force therefore is equal to 3,600 newtons. Yan. So remember yung net force dito is also your centripetal force. So let's try this next example. The coefficient of friction acting upon a 945 kilogram car is 0 0.850. So the car is making a 180 degree turn around the curve with a radius of 35 meters. So determine the maximum speed with which the car can make the turn. Okay. In this case, um, gumawa muna tayo ng force diagram. So assume natin na yung car natin is represented by this box. Okay. So yung ating car is syempre nasa flat surface siya. So kung nasa road siya, ibig sabihin meron tayong normal force coming from the road na acting upwards. And then meron din tayong gravitational force downward. Of course, dahil nasa earth yung ating car. Okay? And then sabi dyan, nag-turn yung car. And for the car to make a turn, para maging possible yun, kailangan niya ng friction force. So assume natin yung friction force mo is acting towards this direction, towards the center of the circle. Kung paikot siya, so kung ito yung um, path niya, okay, so, pag ganito yung direction ng ating um, friction towards the center of the circle. So, if this is your frictional force, okay, so identify natin yung mga given dito sa problem natin. So, meron tayong mass na 945 kilograms and then meron tayong mu na 0 0.850 and meron tayong radius na equal sa 35 meters. So, ang pinapahanap sa atin is the maximum speed. Okay? Para makaikot yung ating car. Okay. So, based dito sa ating force diagram and sa given, alam natin na yung reason para makaikot yung car is because of the friction. 
Okay, so based ito sa problem, um, i-compute muna natin yung value ng Fg, Fn, at saka friction force. So based ito sa mga given natin, i-compute natin yung mga values natin. So mag-start muna tayo dun sa Fn. So, so yung Fn natin sa case na to, um, since yung car naman wala naman siyang vertical movement, that means yung Fn mo, yung normal force is just equal to your gravitational force. Okay? So paano ba natin i-compute yung gravitational force? So, ang gravitational force is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity. So, from here, makukompute natin siya based dito sa given natin na mass na 945 kilograms. Multiply lang natin to sa G na 9.8 meters per second squared. So, makukuha natin value for Fg is equal to 9,261 newtons. So, ibig sabihin, ito rin yung value ng ating Fn. Okay? Now, paano natin compute yung ating friction force? So, ang friction force natin is equal to mu Fn. So, substitute natin itong mga values na to. So, yung mu natin is 0 0.850 times dun sa Fn, which is 9,261 newtons. So, makukuha nating value for the friction force is 10,872 newtons. Okay. Now, alam natin na since yung friction force is yung reason para makaikot yung ating car, ibig sabihin yung ating friction force is also your centripetal force. Okay. So, equal lang sila. So, ngayon, alam natin na kung gagamitin natin ng yung formula ng centripetal force which is equal to mv squared over r, makukompute natin yung value ng v. So kung i-manipulate natin itong equation na to, so cross multiply muna natin yung fc at saka yung r. So magiging ganito siya. fcr, then this is equal to mv squared. So to solve for v, divide natin both sides of the equation by m para makancel to. And then since v squared ito, so kailangan natin kunin yung square root ng both sides of the equation para makuha natin yung value ng v. So therefore, ang value ng v natin is equal to the square root of fcr over m. Okay, so ngayon, substitute na natin to. So ang fc natin is 7,872 newtons. Multiply natin yung r na 35 meters. Okay? And then, i-divide natin siya dun sa ating mass na 945 kilograms. Okay. So, therefore, ang makukuha nating sagot for the value of V is equal to 17.1 meters per second. Yeah. So, kung mapapansin nyo, kailangan muna tayo para ti mag-start with a force diagram para masagutan natin yung ating equation. So let's try this last example. A 1.5 kilogram bucket of water is tied by a rope and whirled in a circle with a radius of 1 meter. At the bottom of the circular loop, the speed of the bucket is 6 meters per second. So determine the acceleration, the net force, and the individual force values when the bucket is at the bottom of the circular loop. So para masagutan natin yung problem na to, kumuha muna tayo ng force diagram. So, let's assume na ito yung ating circular path okay, ng bucket. And sabi dyan, the bucket is tied by a rope. So, kung ito yung bucket natin, okay, so nandun daw siya sa bottom, sa bottom ng loop. So, kung nakatay ito ng rope, ibig sabihin, dito sa rope na to meron tayong tension force. Okay, so, remember, basta meron kang rope, string, or wire, or chain, yan ay parating merong tension force. Remember na bukod sa tension force, meron din tayong force due to gravity, which is acting downwards naman. So, meron tayo rito Fg. Okay? So, ngayon, ang given natin dito sa problem is meron tayong mass na 1.50 kilograms and then meron tayong radius na uh, 1 meter and meron tayong speed. Okay? So, ito na mismo yung speed niya dun sa circular path. So, this is 6 meters per second. So, pinapanap sa atin yung acceleration, yung net force, and yung individual force value. So, pag sinabi natin individual force value, sa so hanapin natin yung value ng 
FP at FG. Okay, so simulan muna natin sa acceleration. So para masagutan natin yung acceleration, alam natin na yung acceleration is equal to V squared over R. So substitute lang natin yung values dito. So meron tayo ritong V na 6 meters per second and then square natin yan. Divide natin sa R na 1 meter. So this one na magiging sagot dito is 36 um, meters per second squared. So yan na yung ating centripetal acceleration. So next, compute natin ang net force. So alam natin na yung net force natin is also equal to mass times yung centripetal acceleration. So ngayon, substitute lang natin to. So meron tayong mass na 1.50 kilograms times yung centripetal acceleration natin na 36 meters per second squared. Okay, so makukuha natin value for the F net is equal to 254 Newtons. Okay, so anong direction nitong net force na to? So remember na yung centripetal force natin is also, is also equal to your F net. So kung ito yung ating bucket, so ibig sabihin, yun kanyang direction ng centripetal force is towards the center of the circle. Okay, so yan yung FC natin. Kaya ibig sabihin, upward yung ating direction. Compute naman natin yung value ng FG. Okay, so para makuha natin yung value ng FG, alam natin na ang equation ng FG is mass times acceleration due to gravity. Sa so substitute natin to, meron tayong 1.50 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. So ang value ng ating FG is 14.7 newtons. Yan. Okay, and then next one. So, i-box natin yung mga values na to. So, last one, i-compute natin yung value ng tension force. So, alam natin na yung net force is just equal to your tension force plus Fg. Yan. So, i-add natin itong dalawa na to. So, kunin natin yung value ng Ft. So, para magawa natin yun, i-transpose natin itong Fg dito sa left side. So, kapag tinranspose natin yung Fg sa kabilang side, magiging ganito na siya. Ft is equal to F net minus Fg. So substitute natin yung values. So alam natin yung F net natin is positive. So 54 newtons kasi going upward siya. Ngayon itong, itong 14.7 newtons, remember this one is acting downwards. Okay, kasi Fg siya. So ito magiging minus negative 14.7 newtons. Okay, so tatandaan mabuti ang sign convention, positive pag going upwards and then negative pag going downwards. So in this case, ang makukuha po nating sagot dito is 68.7 newtons. So ito na yung value ng ating tension force. So since positive to, ibig sabihin ang direction nito is also upward. So sana po nakatulong to ng malaki sa inyo and I'll see you on my next videos.